What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. Morty's a gifted child. He has a special mind. That's why he's my little helper. He's like me. He's gonna be doing great science stuff later in his life. He's too smart for school. He needs to keep hanging out and helping me. Season one of Rick and Morty introduced viewers to the wacky premise of the show. Rick Sanchez and his grandson Morty go on wild, high-concept sci-fi adventures while trying to navigate the many foibles of family life. And look, this family has a lot of foibles. Anyway, so this Rick is known as Rick C-137. Why is he called that? Not important right now. We'll get to that later. This is his grandson, Morty Smith. Rick lives with Morty's family. Beth, Jerry, Summer, and Morty, obviously. Rick and Morty have an interesting relationship. Morty is constantly missing school because Rick is constantly dragging him along on high-concept sci-fi adventures that often take them to alternate dimensions. Case in point, they go on an adventure where they try to smuggle space seeds back through intergalactic customs by hiding them in Morty's butt. When we get to customs, I'm gonna need you to take these seeds into the bathroom, and I'm gonna need you to put them way up inside your butthole, Morty. In my butt? Put them way up inside there, as far as they can fit. Oh, jeez, Rick. I really don't want to have to do that. Look, it's very safe to say that Rick is not a great influence on his grandson. That's kind of what the show is about. Rick turns the family dog Snuffles into a hyper-intelligent freedom fighter which turns out great. Meanwhile, Rick and Morty try to do an Inception slash Nightmare on Elm Street type situation on Morty's math teacher to deal with Morty's terrible grades. <gasps> Holy crap, god damn! I know one thing for sure. I'm giving Morty an A in math, and that's my idea. Christmas episode, kind of. Think Jurassic Park where the guests are shrunk and the park is actually inside the body of a homeless man. Things get a little weird, a little messy. Oh, and also, Jerry's parents are now in a three-way relationship with a much younger man. Then Jacob came into our lives, and we're learning to live again. All three of us. <laughs> cool. Eggnog? Now we are talking. This man's got the apron and the eggnog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Rick and Jerry get stuck in a simulation all because the Zagarions want Rick's secret formula for concentrated dark matter. Rick figures it out and destroys them while Jerry comes up with a catchy little advertising tagline. I give you your new slogan. <sighs> well, say something. I'm Mr. Meeseeks, look at me. Rick gives the Smiths a Meeseeks box to help them with their problems, which sounds great until it becomes clear that the Meeseeks are no match for Jerry's incompetence. Meanwhile, Morty gets to lead an adventure for once, something we quickly realize is not all it's cracked up to be. Rick gives Morty a love potion to make his crush Jessica fall in love with him, which works, but it works a little too well. There's something special about you, Morty. So special. Whoa, Ooh, take it easy. Yeah. Get your hands off of him. One thing leads to another, and the entire planet is now ruined by Rick's science. So he leaves it behind. Taking Morty with him, he finds an identical reality, leaving Jerry, Beth, and Summer behind to fend for themselves. Morty impregnates an alien sex robot and becomes the father of an extremely violent Gazorpazorpian. And while he and Rick deal with that, Summer makes some new friends. Are you the ruler of this Earth? How did you know? The quality of your top. Do you love it? I love it. Clip show! The family sits down to watch a little interdimensional cable. Rick gives Jerry, Beth, and Summer goggles that let them see through the eyes of their alternate selves, and Morty tells Summer about how Rick destroyed their old reality. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Summer makes a deal with the devil, which doesn't turn out great, so she and Rick deal with him the old-fashioned way. Ugh, stupid mother Stupid words! Ugh. Meanwhile, Jerry tries to help Morty with his homework and takes an unscheduled trip to Pluto. Okay, because there are infinite realities in this show, that also means there are infinite Ricks and infinite Mortys. There's even a trans-dimensional council of Ricks, and they want to arrest our Rick for murdering 27 other Ricks. Look, it's a whole thing, but behind it all is an evil Morty. He has an eye patch. That's how you know he's evil. What is he really up to? Well, we'll have to find out later, because now it's time for... House Party! Everybody's invited. We got Gearhead, my guy Squanchy, and don't forget Bird Person. 
Things do go a little sideways, and that's when the whole house gets sent to another dimension. It's cool though, they get it back, and Rick freezes time before Beth and Jerry get home. Shake that ass, that's the end of season one! That's the end, mother... I don't give a f is my new catchphrase! You! Kinda hard to expand and world build for a series built on the premise that there are infinite worlds, but that's exactly what season two does. Rick and Morty continue having crazy adventures, but as we move through season two, we start to see the carnage Rick C-137 tends to leave behind, and why the smartest man alive seems to have no real friends he can rely on. It's been six months, and Rick, Morty, and Summer have just been goofing around with time frozen. And wouldn't you know it, they broke time like all of it, and have to face off with a timeless testicle monster as a result. Rick eventually gets it all sorted, and somewhere an Albert Einstein gets a pretty good idea. No, no, we're in time, mother Rick teaches Morty to pilot Rick's spaceship car thing before realizing Jerry tagged along, so they leave him at a daycare designed for Jerry's. Then they go battle a fart with alien assassin Crumbopulous Michael. Rick runs into an old flame, a hive mind called Unity, and they briefly rekindle their old romance before Unity realizes Rick is just toxic as hell. And all of this, of course, leaves Rick in a pretty dark place. The Smiths can't tell who is real and who is a deadly shape-shifting alien plant thing. Everybody just relax for a second. There's no such thing as an Uncle Steve. That is an alien parasite. Also, we meet Mr. Poopy Butthole. Do we know what this giant head wants? <clears throat> Show me what you got. A giant head named Cromulon appears in the sky, and it seems like he just wants to hear some tasty jams. Ice tea cameos, as does Bird Person. And dang, bro, that is a tasty jam. All right. Head been over. Oh, yeah. Raise the posterior. Morty realizes Rick has been powering the flying car thingy with a miniature universe of his own creation. And if that seems unethical, remember, this is Rick Sanchez C-137. Of course it's unethical. Meanwhile, said flying car thing does a really good job protecting Summer. Rick's going vampire hunting, so naturally he transfers his mind into a much younger clone, thus creating Tiny Rick. Meanwhile, Beth and Jerry go to couples therapy on another planet, which goes about as well as you think it did. Another clip show! More interdimensional cable fun as Jerry almost makes a big mistake. I demand that you cut off my penis and put it in that man's chest. That's not how it works. Well, you're going to make it work. Rick and Morty head to another planet to buy wiper fluid and wind up in a full-blown purge type situation. And Morty might have enjoyed it a little too much. Good news? Bird person is getting married. The bad news, it's to Tammy, who is working for the Galactic Federation trying to capture Rick. She kills Bird Person, and Rick gives himself up, and the Federation takes over Earth. The obscure planet known as Earth, formerly the hiding place of interstellar terrorist and fugitive Rick Sanchez, has just become the 6,048th planet to join the Galactic Federation. Still with us? Great, because season three does a ton of stuff, but most importantly, it moves the whole story about evil Morty and the Citadel forward. And when we zoom back this far, we see what's really happening in the universe. Infinite Mortys are trying to break free from Infinite Ricks forever. Make sense? No? Well, stick around for this, we can help sort it out. Rick's still a captive of the Federation, which has also colonized Earth. A Federation agent probes Rick's mind to get the secret of the portal gun. Instead, Rick fights back. He infiltrates both SEAL Team Rick's and the Citadel of Rick's and kills both. And we also learn of his obsession for McDonald's discontinued Szechuan sauce. In 1998, they had this promotion for the Disney film Mulan, where they, where they, they, they created a new sauce for the McNuggets called Szechuan sauce. Oh, by the way, Bird Person is resurrected. I am... Phoenix person. Phoenix person. Is that what we settled on? I thought we all agreed on Cyberbird. Next is a full-blown Mad Max style situation where Morty deals with his anger that his dad Jerry just moved out by getting a huge arm and just destroying fools in the octagon ring. Pickle Rick! 
This one's pretty self-explanatory. I turned myself into a pickle, Morty! Boom! Big reveal, I'm a pickle! Rick turns himself into a pickle to get out of family therapy, and the result is what has to be the greatest pickle person on rat action scene in the multiverse. Morty gets to lead an episode, so we meet a team of superheroes called the Vindicators. And they all team up to stop a dangerous supervillain who just turns out to be Rick. It's a Rick and Jerry episode! Jerry gets caught up in a plot to assassinate Rick, which goes poorly, and Summer has a pretty big problem of her own back on Earth. Oh, come on! Rick and Morty need a break, so naturally they hit up an alien spa, which drains them of their toxic traits and transfers them to deformed physical versions of themselves. The result is clean Rick and Morty versus toxic Rick and Morty, which ends with them all joining back together again. Back at the Citadel, there's an election held after our Rick slaughtered the Council of Ricks. Look, the Citadel is a mess, but a Morty wins the election, and once again we see evil Morty is behind it all, and is now controlling the Citadel. What is he really planning? Morty wants to get rid of a nasty memory, and finds out Rick has actually been scrubbing his memories this whole time. So of course, we get to watch a few before both Rick and Morty's entire memories are wiped. Thankfully, Rick had a contingency plan for this, and Summer saves the day. Well, hello all. I am the king of Fruity Land, but I go by another name too. We know. It's Tommy. We know. We know. Beth goes back to Fruity Land, a magical land Rick made for her as a kid. But just like everything in this show, things get pretty effed up pretty quickly. Meanwhile, Jerry tries to get himself out there again and starts dating an alien bounty hunter, which also gets pretty effed up pretty quickly. Rick totally fights the president, and Beth tries to figure out if she's a clone of herself or actually herself. In the post-credits, fan-favorite Mr. Poopy Butthole makes his only appearance in Season 3. Ooh-wee! See ya for Season 4 in, like, a really long time! I, I might even have a big white Santa Claus beard and a can and a, and a, and a, and a couple of grandkids and all that kind of stuff. See you, see you then! Hope you liked all that Citadel stuff in Season 3, because Season 4 does away with it all completely. See, Rick doesn't want Morty thinking about the big picture, so he does away with the canon stuff, and the two go on self-contained adventures for just about the entire season. Morty uses alien crystals to get a super powerful Akira-type situation going back home after Rick dies in an adventure. Rick's consciousness bounces around a few fascist alternate realities before getting back home and setting things right. There's an alien named Glutie in the Smith house, and he really wants to develop an app. Rick warns the family not to, which of course Jerry does immediately, and while they deal with that, Rick goes to great lengths to protect the perfect pooping spot. Rick tries to out-heist a rival, while we find out Mr. Poopy Butthole is now a college professor. Good for him. We are the Slut Dragons. We live in these slut caves where we f suck and eat f and we kindly ask that you leave. Dude, chill out. If you hadn't guessed, there's a Slut Dragon episode and this is it. Morty wins a dragon, but it immediately connects with Rick. A wizard gets involved and then it only gets weirder because these dragons are like super sexual. Yeah, we like it down here because we can f woolly mammoths. Get out. Get the f out of Shut here, up, Michael. Michael, you're the only one that f that thing. Get the f out of here. Morty gets bitten by a space snake, which leads to a whole thing where space snakes from the future rain down on Earth and totally take over until Rick and Morty time travel to stop them. Rick and Morty get stuck aboard the Story Train, which is straight up just a weird setup to do another anthology clip show without doing interdimensional cable again. Rick, Morty, and Summer battle the Glorzos, which are kind of like Xenomorph facehuggers. They defeat the Glorzos, obviously, but think they're about to give birth to chestbursters when it turns out they just needed to go to the bathroom real bad. Morty convinces Rick to create a save point device, allowing them to go back before their deaths so they can correct their mistakes. This, of course, is a pretty big mistake. We learn that Rick had a relationship with a sentient planet, and she's pregnant, and Rick is the father. While you try and sort that out in your brain, the rest of the family faces off with a space god named Reggie. Remember when Beth wondered if she was actually a clone? She was. The real Beth is out in the universe fighting sci-fi space battles and junk. 
This all leads to a battle with the Galactic Federation where Tammy is killed and Phoenix Person is shut down. Thanks, pal. I'm, I'm glad you ignored my advice. Which brings us to Season 5. Rick is very much still trying to keep his adventures as one-offs, but eventually his past, or is it his future, whatever, finally catches up with him. On a related note, we finally find out what evil Morty has been up to all this time. Is that Mr. Nimbus? Nimbus? Richard? You look like ass. Mr. Nimbus returns. Who is Mr. Nimbus? Well, he's king of the ocean, and he controls the police. That's pretty much all you need to know. In the season's second episode, Rick and Morty die. No! Ah! Shit! Actually, the whole family dies a bunch of times. Obviously, it's not really them. They're decoys, just in case anyone wanted to kill them. Problem is, all of the decoys attack each other, and everybody dies except the whole family, including clone Beth. Or is that real Beth? Look, whatever. They were all hanging out in space while this was happening, so they're fine. Also fine? The Rick and Morty answer to Captain Planet. Actually, her name is Planetina, she's voiced by Alison Brie, and Morty is really taken with her. Or at least until she murders a few hundred people, anyway. Episode 4 is the Deadly Sperm Monsters episode, which honestly is exactly what it sounds like. Look, it was all Morty's fault when he decided to get busy with a horse, <clears throat> reproductive material collector, at Beth's horse hospital. Long story short, Rick and Morty fight the giant sperm monsters with the help of the underground horse people and an egg donated by Summer, which creates a giant space incest baby named Naruto. Summer and Morty try and impress the cool kid at school, while Rick, Beth, and Jerry go to hell to deal with a full-blown Hellraiser situation. They figure it out, and Morty and Summer figure out the cool kid is really kinda lame. All right, boys, search every bird. If Sanchez is here, I wanna hear you goblin. Let me look at you, scum. Get out of here, you wobble neck. Episode 6 is the Thanksgiving one, where Rick, Morty, and the President of the United States turn themselves into turkeys to defeat a bunch of mutant turkey people trying to overthrow the government. Look, it happens. Episode 7 is the Voltron episode, but it's also strangely a Goodfellas slash Godfather homage. And in the end, the family has to team up against a bunch of other Voltron types with the help of Naruto, the giant space incest baby Summer created back in the sperm alien episode. Still with us? Great. Because here's where things really start to get weird. Hey, listen, everybody. My name's Rick, and this is my new friend Birdman and his friends. We all just met at this festival, and we're so high we formed a band. Bird Person returns again. Rick resurrects his best friend by reliving a bunch of their favorite memories together, including the Battle of Blood Ridge, which, among other things, is just super badass as f In the end, Bird Person abandons Rick because he knows the most important person to Rick is always Rick. In Season 5's penultimate episode, Rick abandons Morty as a sidekick and replaces him with two crows. Morty is devastated while Rick is out there learning that he should give his sidekicks a little more credit. He's anti-heroic, run! I don't understand. He's only one man. With the power of a thousand crows. Ooh. Good luck. And in the season finale, Rick abandons the crows after realizing he was their rebound. He and Morty wind up at the Citadel, and we find out what evil Morty has been up to. He's trying to escape this multiverse, where Rick is always the smartest man alive. Basically, he wants to get away from Rick forever, which he does, while Rick C-137 and Morty rescue as many Ricks and Mortys as they can before the whole Citadel explodes. And that's where we leave things. Rick and Morty are drifting through space in an escape vessel, while evil Morty escaped this version of the multiverse by popping through a yellow time portal on the other side of the central finite curve. Hey, thanks for watching. And for more Rick and Morty, here's where we think evil Morty just went. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.